I want to talk about real world use cases. And, and obviously, um, you have so many uh, customers kind of on each side of the marketplace. Maybe talk right. through, you know, one or two examples of, uh, of the types of um, infrastructure providers and the types of companies that are actually using this. Sure, sure, sure. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk about um, customers and people who are actually storing data with us, right? Um, and it's a pretty broad group of people. Um, uh, we've got, uh, you know, we've got people who are storing video and, and, uh, and, and photos and things like that. And, and we give them a fast, easy way to share data. We're seeing a lot of usage among academic uh, data sets right now, right? Where you know, you've got a massive data set of, let's say, climate data or uh, energy data, you know, or health data, and you want to be able to share that securely with large numbers of people, make it really fast to get it out there. We're just an excellent solution for doing that because it's it's very secure, very durable, and yet the data can get extremely fast to everybody who wants to use it. Um, we're also seeing some more. Uh, you know, more relevant to probably the area that you, you spent uh, spend time in. We've got a few people who are actually using us as a way to get blockchain data distributed. So blockchains themselves are pretty massive, right? And and in an ideal world, it's really easy for anybody who's running a node uh, um, to be able to get the entire blockchain and get it quickly. Um, so the Ethereum Classic wrote about how they're using us, but uh, lots of others were using us as well um, to get uh, get data out there and get it get it uh, distributed quickly and, and securely. Um, uh, interestingly, part of what you get when you do decentralized storage is you get this massive improvement in privacy and security. So as I mentioned, you know, every file that gets uploaded to us gets encrypted before it gets uploaded, then gets split up into 80 pieces, each of which goes to a different drive on the network that only knows that they have a piece. And so if a hacker wanted to get at that file, they'd have to find 80 drives out of, you know, you know thousands or hundreds of thousands compromise each one, all they would get would be an encrypted file. And even if they managed to somehow decrypt that, the next file they go after is going to be different. So if you're storing like, you know, really sensitive personal data, we're a great solution. Uh, I remember a few years ago, Equifax got breached, you know, so millions of people's personal data got compromised because one you know, incompetent administrator at Equifax configured a print server incorrectly. Um, with us, that just can't happen. Right? Not only can, can we screw up, but you can't screw up as an end user. And it is on screen. So that's those are the kinds of use cases that we're seeing: is highly secure, highly fast, highly private data that needs to get stored and distributed globally. Is sort of our our sweet spot. And are there situations where companies are choosing kind of centralized and decentralized uh, solutions? side by side. So I may be a company, yeah. I've got some storage you know, needs, uh, and I may actually split this between both centralized and decentralized. Um, yeah. Maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so um, you know, most of our, our customers, you know, right now have some data that they're storing locally in their own data center, and then some data that they're storing, let's say, in Amazon or Google or, a, 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 you know, or, or Microsoft. Um, and Generally speaking, what they will do with us is they'll say, okay, I'm going to give you 10% of my data and I'm going to try you out. And so, uh, you know, every day as I'm running jobs and I'm creating data, I'm going to push my, my backups to you or my snapshots to you and see how you do. And then over time, what they're, what they're seeing is, gosh, this is great. Rather than giving you 10% of the new data I create, let me give you 50, 70% of the data that I create. And then at some point, they may take the data that they're currently storing into Amazon and us and that's that would be great but um you know what i think is uh a sort of an important truism is that if you're going to be doing something disruptive it can be disruptive but you don't want to be you don't want your customers to experience it in a revolutionary way you want to give them the opportunity to experience it in an evolutionary way because as so explain, you, ex explain, explain explain that that is very very good advice but explain that sure i i, I mean we, as a brand new company, can take on lots and lots of risks, right? If we're, if if our, but our customers, um, you know, most customers don't want to have to change what they're doing in order to get advantage, right? And to ask a customer to completely change everything that they do, how they write their code, how they how they store it, what their risk profile is, is, is asking a lot, right? And so, what we like to do is be able to give people, you know, the ability to say, hey, I'm going to change three lines of code. Suddenly, I'm, I'm using storage, and it's cheaper, faster, better, more secure. I love it, and I'm going to evolve to do more and more over time with with us. And you know, you know, 
more they do with us, the more uh, benefit they can get. But asking them to sort of change their world for us is, is, a, is a non-starter. That, uh, that makes sense. What's the biggest challenges uh, as you guys kind of move forward? Like what, what do you spend your time thinking the most about that you guys need to either solve for uh, or, or kind of come up with solutions? Uh, sure. I mean, so we, you know, we, we spent a, a ton of time making sure that we offered a centralized storage solution that was you know, high availability, high performance, had a large enough number of nodes, um, ran really well. We actually had a year-long beta process uh, you know, we didn't lose a single file, which was important to us, but you know, making sure that what we were offering was rock solid. We, the last thing we wanted to do was sort of be the first to market with a decentralized storage system, have people get excited about it, and then and then fail. Because we wouldn't just be failing for ourselves, we'd be failing for the whole industry. Um, uh, so we spend a lot of time doing that. We spend a lot of time on incentives. Uh, we want to make it really... You have the right incentives in place for people who are running the nodes so that they're profitable and easy and they're not and they're not disappointed by what they have. And then also that we don't set the wrong incentives, right? We don't want to incent bad behavior. Um, and then a lot of it is, you know, the normal locking and tackle, building a great company, building a great culture, uh, building a great community. Um, and you know, that's that's a challenge, but it's also really fun. It's ultimately the community is so much larger than the company, and the company is so much larger than you. That's, that's the 